Alright, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here. As y'all can see by the title of today's video, we're here to discuss the difference between a good big man and a bad big man in NBA 2K20 and kind of explain the struggles that will go into pick and roll if you don't exactly know what you're doing with it and specifically talking about the inside big. So you're going to see they have a paint beast on their team, my build is a finisher and I'm the running the big man spot for us and I'm here to kind of also explain the positives and pros and cons that come with being an inside big as well or a really big advantage to being a smaller player at the three so you're going to see I have my finisher at the three like I said with the small forward we got the facilitating finisher with dope he's our lockdown build and then we got CB chilling I call him kitchen he's on his new playmaking shot creator build six foot one as y'all know I've been preaching this like six foot one point guard as far as like the undersized good speed has 99 speed even at 97 overall so you're going to see Kitchen in this video has 99 speed, 99 excel. Um, I I think he has 99 ball control as well. I'm not exactly positive on that, but anyway, you're gonna see they have the playmaking shot creator SS3, legend lockdown build, perimeter lockdown, who won formula as well, and they have a superstar one paint beast. So again, we're kind of here to explain the pros and cons of being, like I said, the lower overall. I do feel like you can definitely get away with being a lower overall uh inside big as far as you don't really need you know all types of badges or all types of like filled out ratings you're pretty specific in the in the attribute categories you need but anyway you're gonna see this guy that we're playing against he knows his stuff too and i gotta give him props i want to i want to explain to y'all in this video it's not me saying i'm i'm a super good inside big which i do feel like i am but i i do want to kind of explain i'm not trying to talk down this player right here i'm not trying to say that he is the bad big man i'm trying to set an example of you're just gonna see a couple situations where I'll just go ahead and say if a, if a big man were to be doing this every single play because there are bigs who do this stuff every single play that you're going to see later in this vid that really deteriorate <laughs> you know the the positives of being this build now one thing I want to talk about too and we've talked about this on the channel a little bit lately where I feel like an outside big is a whole lot easier to be to be not very high IQ or knowledgeable about in the game and for instance what I mean by that is you can essentially stand in one in one place and hold B and just not move at all, and you can really get away with that because you don't have to you know take the slips yourself as far as the as far as like you know for instance right here right my guard can't really drive because I can't shoot so for instance I need to know when to when to roll when to slip when to let go of the screens and all stuff all types of stuff like that with a rim sharp you can kind of just hold B stand there let your guard drive when he wants to and it, it becomes a whole lot easier than that now right here you're gonna see this is the stuff that I'm talking about I want you guys to really understand understand this and I want and I'm gonna go ahead and run this back too because I really want you to see what I'm talking about here now like I said this guy definitely knew what he was doing and I want to explain he definitely knows how to run these slips however on this play right here he did not have any clue if we're being real as to what to do here so again you're gonna see him come and set the roll and set the pick and roll he's gonna do it again however I already it's so predictable I can just drop back really early and, and then dope steps up and you're gonna see it again right here as well where boom he sets the pick it makes it easy for dope to drop back on him easy for me to like you know get back to the guard now you're gonna see right here though I do get hit with like an off-ball screen. I gotta say, I, I show big props to anybody who still runs these off-ball screens in 2K20 because it's gone extinct and it's such a ISO-oriented game or just like actual ball handler, pick and roll oriented game. And again, I gotta show props to anybody who actually runs them off-balls. I wish this game had more of that needed in it and unfortunately it doesn't. But anyway, you're gonna see, boom, he steps up, I'm down for the slip, easy. And again, this video is me putting you inside bigs onto how to actually play this game if you haven't already come across my channel. Now, for those of you who do know about my channel, and one thing right there that I want to talk about too, and we'll get back to that topic that I had, but one thing I want to talk about too is you're only as good as your point guard allows you to be, and I really got to put that into like you know perspective. So that guy was wide open on the roll; they could have easily had him. Fortunately for them, they you know their guard sees that right there as well, and that's what makes like guarding the inside bigs kind of tough as well. Is when you come in with a lineup where you really are planning to play side defense because I'm gonna put it to y'all like this with these outside bigs being the meta as far as 3v3 goes personally I like to play a whole lot of side defense so I like to have both versatile defenders so me and dope dope is six foot seven I'm six foot nine I feel pretty confident in both our interior defense and perimeter defense ability but not like perfectly confident in either of them so I'm saying you know I love guarding the ISO but I'm not gonna fight through picks I love, you know, Dope is probably pretty confident in guarding the ISO as well, but he isn't going to want want to fight through picks too much, but he can still get the job done as far as that goes, and I can hedge pretty well. But you're not going to see hedge defense really work against uh, outside, you know, outside bigs very well, because they could definitely catch you sleeping on those. But anyway, long story short, again, my whole point is, 
another thing that we have to talk about is communication as well. I mean, look at this right here. This is like supreme communication from me and Kitchen right here. So the last, you know, portion of this, I saw him stepping up a little bit, just kind of hedging for no reason, right? And I think a lot of defenders kind of, you know, get into a bad habit of this where they hedge just kind of for no reason. So again, you're going to see, I mean, his block is perfectly fine. He got through that screen easy. However, I'm reading the backside while setting the screen and you can see I already know he's stepping up a little bit high and from the pick that we ran the time before that he looked like he was stepping up as well that's where me and kitchen I, I need to I need to show y'all some live commentary stuff sometime too especially when running this lineup right here with me dope and kitch but again I mean me and him are just so on point with the communication don't really even need to talk about it to this point and I mean he's he's a very high IQ point guard knows his stuff and knows exactly what to do in you know clutch situations where you know maybe he'll try to have some fun he'll try to have his fun and learn a little bit about the game in the times where we're beating people really bad but in the times where you know like it's time to take it seriously he can really adjust and really like you know like kill it with this point guard stuff man like he's he is really nice with this stuff but however you see he gets he gets the steal right there you're gonna see as well there were there were a lot of times in this game where it was kind of slipping away from us due to like silly turnovers like that and again you see like i mean kitchen kind of whiffs on the passing lane right there they get the dunk now i'm not placing any blame on anybody when i say this but obviously you guys are gonna see for the most part we start to bury ourselves in a little bit of a hole and most of it is just due to like like i said kind of silly turnovers just stupid mistakes that like more so game mechanics than actual mental mistakes that any of us made but you're gonna see right here we get the little step back jumper for kitch off the screen however it makes him like fade as he does it he misses the shot right there again we started to kind of bury ourselves in a little bit of hole boom two fast breaks not as not necessarily two fast break dunks but you get what i'm saying they get a dunk off one layup on the other same difference they get two fast breaks off our misses or mistakes or turnovers whatever maybe and then they get a bump steal off that right there again i mean everything was just piling up and at that point right there i mean a lot of people would just be thinking this stuff was over and i didn't want to give this away in the title i really didn't want to give this away in the title but anyway you can see we are down 17 to 10 right now and this is like a massive hole as far as stage threes goes you're gonna you're gonna run into so many problems with this especially when you have an inside big when you are an inside big on the stage 3v3 court and you're down seven points you might as well kiss it goodbye right there because you aren't able to force up threes as easy they're gonna be able to double team your point guard that is the one major negative as far as like I, i'm obviously there's more than just one negative when it comes to being inside big you have spacing issues but like i said there are positives and negatives and pros and cons whatever it may be but anyway right here like i said a lot of people would have just gave up right there you saw their big man was just running out of bounds he was kind of making fun of us essentially you know saying like hey this one's basically over y'all might as well just like call it good reel it in but we are not giving up in this situation all right i mean we we're pretty mentally tough in this situation and you know it's just a video game it's not like you need mental toughness to like be good with that situation but y'all get what i'm saying we're not backing down from this stuff and we're going to keep going full throttle on this and like i said it's going to be tough with an inside big because we are limited as far as like you know putting up three pointers and stuff like that too however we can we can work some of these full switch situations but at the end of the day they can do that right there which is straight double team listen I'm gonna put it like this they're gonna be able to do that no matter what as far as like the only thing we could do to counter that if we had an outside big was to just straight up run an iso but if your point guard isn't really built for that then you're gonna run into some problems now i gotta run that back real quick i really gotta run this back because this was some sly stuff right here all right so boom i i've activated the takeover as soon as i have to get on the ball now was i expecting to you know have to drop back and like play the passing lane on the lob no not necessarily but I don't think I would have been able to do this if I didn't have my takeover activated. So you're going to see, boom, get barely get the tip right there. I mean, that plus 10 speed, plus 10 vert, it really came in clutch in that situation. And honestly, it might have just saved us the game in that situation too. So anyway, like I said, we're getting right back into this. Remember, the scoreboard was once 17 to 10. And I really want y'all to keep that in mind because this was a really impressive, really impressive end of the game right here. So again, we're coming back with this pick and roll stuff. It took us a little bit longer to set this one up, but I was able to land one good screen um, coming up right here. So you're going to see it was really weird too, because I did it with like my back facing him and it forces the full switch. And if y'all remember the play that I showed before this, where it was me kind of stepping up, playing the hedge defense, returning to the big to tip the lob. If that were the situation that happened where it didn't require them to full switch and my screen wasn't good enough, then it probably would have been a really ugly lob. I'm talking like for me to try to finish on the rim take would not have gone well. I've seen it firsthand. That rim takeover is a problem when it comes to the finishing wise. And that's why it's so convenient that we were able to get the full switch to, to happen. But you're going to see right here, this is a big mental mistake. I was trying to stick the big man. Kitchen thought that he was uh, going to take the big 
and it was just like I said a really big mental mistake but fortunately we get bailed out by him missing a wide open shot that was massive that he missed that and you can see they're one for five total from three it's it's not the best look I'll put it like that but I will say our perimeter defense was pretty solid in this game we kind of stuck to it and gave up our twos early on you know relied in kitchen to make shots like this 30 percent green you do see though I was able to beat him to the box out so even if he missed it I was pretty confident that I was still gonna be able to get the rebound but right now you're gonna see as far as defense goes I'm definitely stepping up either really high in the hedge defense or we're gonna play sides whichever of the two but I get the steal right there boom that's honestly that's there were so many massive things that happened in this game toward the end and like I said a lot of people you could have just kissed it goodbye I mean like there was almost no way anybody would have seen us winning when we're down 17 to 10 in the stage threes like I said with an inside big but we stuck to it we got you know we got our buckets whatever they, the defense gave us as far as like you know say they even double team kitchen or gave up the lobs and stuff like that too we just took our twos played good defense like we knew we should have been doing the whole entire game as well but anyway you can see i didn't have too many rebounds i gotta say dope was killing it with the crashes from the corner he was actually able to secure like two really important rebounds kitchen was able to get up some really tough three pointers that he shouldn't have been able to with the way they were playing defense on us and at the end of the day everybody plays their role and this is the type of content i love making because it's not me just dunking on people 15 times or you know <laughs> for 15 16 points whatever it may be but it is you know like i said playing as a team playing good team defense and good team offense sticking to it even when you're down pretty bad and anyway i hope you all enjoy this type of content if you do feel free to drop a like sub if you're new it's on them noties all that good stuff and i'll have a couple more 2v2 videos for y'all coming soon too and actually i've been on a tear when it comes to this gameplay stuff so just expect so there's gonna be some really good gameplays coming up beat a couple legends whether it be on the twos or the threes i've been running with kitchen and dope pretty often as well twos with dope and then i don't know it's, it's just been a good time and it, there's gonna be a lot of good videos to come with that come with this as well but anyway i hope you all enjoyed the vid if you did feel free to drop a like like i said all that good stuff so if you're new turn on the noties and if you made it to the very end of the video put e3 in the comments to show your support that you made it all the way through so as you can see that rep meter right there Listen, I'll put it like this. I definitely hit Elite 3 tonight. You're going to see a lot of the content, however, in the next three or four days, be videos from, like I said, this night of me running because there was some great videos and I can't just not bring them to y'all just because I hit Elite 3 and now you're going to see me as Elite 2 in the videos and you're going to be like, yo, what the heck's going on with this? These videos are like two or three days old. And it just understand, like I said, for all my real subs who like are, you know, at this point in the video, put legend in the comments to show your support that you made it all the way through to the end of this point in the video. Because like I said, it's going to be really important that y'all understand that I'm not going to have elite three videos until probably three or four days from now, because there are so many good videos that I made or good gameplay games that happened in just today alone. And even yesterday, a couple a couple games too, but anyway like i said i just want you to understand there's gonna be you know like i said it's gonna be elite two gameplays of me at like 95 to 99 percent <laughs> so just understand that's what's to come but i'm really looking forward to the elite three stuff i'm looking forward to grinding this legend meter and bro i cannot wait so i get these extra 40 badges and like be able to shoot threes with my finisher build and be able to play defense with a facilitating finisher i just it's gonna be really crazy but anyway hope you all enjoyed the vid and other than that take it easy man peace